Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com, here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is uh, Monday, May 18, 2015. Uh, let's go to Inside the Numbers. We're going to take a look at the SPY chart and the E-mini, more new highs. Take a look at crude oil, see where our support levels are. Look at gold, uh, talk about what my expectations are there. Interest rates in the bond market, we'll see what's going on there. Pretty much a down day today. Uh, and then a dollar, we saw a little bit of a rally, and we'll talk about the expectations and what's going to happen in that market. So here's a daily chart of the SPY, and we had new highs. I'm going to draw your attention back to the 212.97, from the high of 212.97 on, on December 18. And last week, uh, at least once, probably three or four times, I told you that we were going to get to the 212.97. We would go through that level, probably go up into the 213 and a quarter, and then back, back off, and that would be a pretty good intraday scalp. Um, that's what happened today. So let's take a look at where we went intraday. <clears throat> and we made a high of 213.40, overshot a little bit, and then we backed off back down to 213 uh oh six okay so uh, that was a pretty obvious uh scalp although we didn't come back below the uh 212.97 which is interesting so that close is relatively bullish um although if you recall i did say that today let's go back to the daily chart i, I said that today was going to be a cycle turn day or a daily cycle top because we've been up several days in a row so um, we'll have to see how that plays out tomorrow, but since we had a very, very bullish close, no volume, light volume, um, higher prices ahead, you know, I still say that um, on the E-mini contract, um, I still had an indication for uh, 2130 to 2135, and uh, we hit a high today of uh, 212875 so that's pretty close but not satisfying the upside target so while we do have a cycle turn uh, we could see a little bit higher push but I would expect that we're going to see some kind of a pullback at minimum down to this uh, brown line here at 2115 that 2115 was an ultra ultra important level and uh, I would think that we're going to have to retest that again anyway so that's where we are we're going to have to kind of let the market tell us what to do when we're looking for downside pressure, if we're looking for a short side trade, we really have to wait for the market to give us a signal. Anybody see a signal here that the market is, uh, is headed downward? No, there's no signal. We have to see a reversal day. We have to see an engulfing candle, a doji candle on volume. Uh, we have to see a reversal candle. Um, you know, none of those things are happening right now. So even though we have a cycle turn day, we've got to see the market tell us that a turn is at hand and we have to see the market put in a, uh, a turn signal. Okay. So if we even look in in the intraday, um, you know, that doesn't count. That's not a topping tail or anything like that. In fact, this is a bullish pattern here. We're, we're going sideways. Whenever the market's going sideways, um, it normally wants to make another move higher. So we really have to see what's in store for the market tomorrow. Other than that, with light volume and a pretty, you know, watch the paint dry market, there's nothing going on. So let's flip over to the gold market and uh, let's go to the daily chart and see what we've got. Um, I've got some Fibonacci lines drawn in. And what did we do? We came into um, that high again of um, 1231. We had a high of 1232 today. So, you know, I had this purple line drawn in for I don't know how long, for a very, very long time. We finally pierced through it tonight. We're hovering over the 50% retrace. Um, is the market going to push through and go to the 618? Or are we going to back off a little bit and uh, maybe go down and uh, test some of these other levels here? <clears throat> maybe something like uh, 1212, 1214, 1215. Uh, or, or maybe even a little bit lower, maybe back down to the 382 uh, at 12.05. We'll have to see. Um, maybe there's there's $10, $12 on the downside. But if we, for example, close above 
uh, 12, let's say we close at 12.15 hourly, back off to 12.15, close hourly above 12.15. That's going to spell higher prices ahead. But I was happy to see that this 12.31 get pierced today because that line's been in there for weeks and weeks and weeks. I've had that line in there a long time. So I'm glad that that upside target got satisfied today. That tells me that the market is acting well. And uh, if we go to the hourly chart, um, you know, it's telling me the, the the market's acting well. Could we see a back off down to the 212 area? Yeah, we could, but I still think there's higher prices if we should get down to that level and then begin closing hourly above that level and especially daily above that level. That's going to spell a lot higher prices, and I think that would be very, very bullish and positive for the gold market. So it's acting well. It's doing everything we thought it would. Uh, not much more to say on that front. It's just a very positive market, in my opinion. Okay, um, oil. Crude oil. Um, we're basically in no man's land. We're below the 60.50 that the market would turn bullish if we recaptured that and closed above it. However, we're, we're above the 58.63 that the market may want to test again. And if it holds, that would be bullish. But if it didn't hold, meaning closing hourly below that and especially daily below that, that would be bearish. So if you zoom back out to the uh, daily chart, whoops, zoom back out to the daily chart. Okay, this is where we are. So if we stayed above 58.63, I think we would still see higher prices because we would be going sideways, consolidating for another move higher. If we closed below 58.63 on an hourly and then daily basis, uh, then our next target would be 57. And if we close below 57, look out. Um, but I think this market's still bullish. I think there's still higher prices ahead. Um, whether that happens in the next day or so or not, I'm not sure. But over the next couple of weeks, we could certainly see higher prices. And when we get to the dollar, you'll see why I'm mentioning that. Um, so let's see. We did the market. We did gold. We did crude oil. Let's talk about bonds real quick. Bonds had a nice drubbing today. And, you know, I, I wasn't convinced this was a bottom. I said it could be, but we were going to have to close above this high. What was this high? Um... 121.65. Where did we close today? 121.59. It's kind of funny how that works, isn't it? Um, I would suggest that until we close above 121.65, then there's no trade on the long side. It's just interesting how these numbers never cease to amaze me. And you can see how when I'm giving them to you in advance, and then the following day it works out that we close, you know, just below it by a couple of pennies, you can see how important those numbers are. They are important. So um, you can kind of see where my mindset here is. I'm waiting for the market to show me more. Okay, even though we closed above it here, the fact that we closed below that level here today tells me that the market isn't ready to shoot higher yet. Now, can can we do it again tomorrow and close above tomorrow? Yeah, we sure we could. But, you know, I wanted to see, you know, the market confirm above, meaning let's see some follow through. We didn't see any follow through. And what we did was see lower prices back below this level here. So um, to me, that market wasn't ready to trade yet. And that's why I didn't put out a trade alert. Okay, um, let's go over to the dollar. So um, the dollar is acting well. I think there could be higher prices a little bit ahead for the dollar. However, how much higher remains to be seen? Uh, let me see. I have some notes here. The dollar could get up to, well, I guess, you know, really the 95 area stands out. And what that is, is this, uh, this area here where, where we kind of fought that for a while. 95 is a round number. 95 is going to meet this downsloping 20 period moving average. Maybe a little pierce in 95. Um, other than that, I think that, that any more upside on the dollar than 95 in the short term would surprise me. And if we found resistance at that level, meaning a downsloping 20 trend, 20 period moving average trend line, 50 period is starting to slope kind of slowly downward. Um, that means that the market is starting to struggle again, and I wouldn't be surprised to see lower prices. 
There's no trade right here. We've got to let the market show us more. Let the market tell us what to do, and then we'll see the pattern and then trade off the pattern. And that's really where it is. Um, I think tomorrow is going to be an important day for the euro, an important day for the dollar, an important day for bonds. And if all that comes true, then it may be an important day for the stock market. We'll have to see. So that turn that I was specifying in the, in the stock market could actually apply to other markets, even though I didn't have anything definitive. Yet I do have um, some indications that there's a... Uh, um, an important culmination on Tuesday, meaning tomorrow on the uh, the 19th um, of May. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Right now, that's really all I have. I don't have a lot of new data, but yet again, at least it's the forecast. You know where we are. You know what I'm looking for. You know where we're wrong. You know what the upside targets are. You know where the downside supports are or resistance on the upside, support on the downside. So I'm giving you everything I have. We'll see how the week unfolds. I'm sure we'll have more tomorrow as the markets begin to move a little bit. But it's very quiet out here today. And when it's very quiet, there's not a lot of change from the day before. So that's about all I have. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis, folks.